Right, Cherubs? Here's a famous one. The Arnolfini Marriage by Van Eyck. Right away, lots of things strike me as interesting here. The image seems thrown together, with shoes on the floor and fruit spilling at the window, but it also seems highly staged at the same time, with fancy clothes, a well-made bed, and, you know, a marriage. Something else that seems off is the two names associated with this painting don't seem to fit. Arnolfini is clearly Italian, and yet Van Eyck is from Bruges. So let's start there, then discuss the seemingly thrown together but highly calculated visual language of this painting. Bruges, in the early part of the 15th century, was an economic hub. It connected the timber from Scandinavia, to the spices which came through the Italian ports, to the citrus from Spain and Portugal. Around the time of this painting, which is 1434, the Duke of Burgundy called the city, in his usual Eurocentric way, the most famous city in the world. The Florentines, though, had been making major advancements in banking. You've probably heard of the Medici banking family. If not, check out the Ted Ed animation I wrote on Botticelli's Adoration of the Magi. The Arnolfini were not working with the Medici, but were still a Florentine banking family. Of course, the Italian bankers were in Bruges to take advantage of all this economic activity, so we have an Italian in Bruges. This information will help us understand some of the visuals we're presented with here. Those advancements in banking and trade were forming the modern banking economy, and with low literacy rates at the time, there existed a need to self-promote through images. The visual language of painting, though, in the early 15th century, was highly dependent on religious iconography, so this painting has a strange appearance for a reason. It's using the visual traditions of religion to promote the economic success of an Italian banker in Bruges. So here we go. First, there's some obvious ostentatious displays of wealth. Large hats, fur coats, an unreasonable amount of green cloth in her wedding dress. White dresses didn't become fashionable until the late 19th century. They have a nice rug, probably coming from the east, and the list goes on and on. Then, there are some less obvious displays of wealth, like this Mr. Arnolfini being such a wimpy looking dude. That's on purpose. His sloping shoulders and soft hands show that he's never done any sort of manual labor and he does not need physical strength to be intimidating. He has money to do that. Money, and that shifty look that tells me that he's cunning. Then there's the religious bit. The chandelier, clearly expensive, only has one candle. If you can't tell, weddings were a bit different in the 15th century. They didn't need a physical witness because there was a divine witness, symbolized frequently by a large candle, or in this case, a single candle on a fancy lighting fixture, mixing religion with wealth. Then you've got this dog here. There was a tradition of the day that the tombstone for the wife of a powerful man would sometimes have a dog carved into it, illustrating faithfulness and marriage. It also shows that they have enough money to afford more food than they need. Mirrors were expensive, and the spotless nature of this one can represent the religious purity of the union, while its carved nature hints at the wide vision and reach of its owner. Again, wealth and power demonstrated through the visual language of religion. Even those scattered clogs on the ground contribute to this theme. For us, they seem like clutter, but if we read the painting as one of Van Eyck's contemporaries, we'd see a reference to a passage from the book of Exodus. Do not come any closer. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. The sacrament of marriage transforms the ground into something holy, but that ground is also the swanky home of this banker. This painting shows us a language and worldview in transition. It straddles two cultures. On one side of this painting, we have a culture connected through its Christian identity. To the other side of this painting, we have a culture connected through the complex trade networks and banking. We see here a move from the sacred to the secular. We see an attempt to appropriate the symbols of a withering medieval culture to elevate and promote the heroes of a burgeoning early modern culture. And to be clear, I'm calling the market economy the hero of this new culture, not necessarily this wimpy dude. If you like the way I discuss art, you can subscribe to this channel. If you really like the way that I discuss art, you can check out my Patreon page by clicking the link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.